Our first question is, who composes the remnant church? Is it only Seventh-day Adventists? Who are, or rather, what are the defining characteristics of the remnant and what is its purpose? Let's get a broad view of what remnant might mean. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 2, Isaiah says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that corruptors. They've forsaken the Lord, they've provoked the Holy One of Israel, they've gone away backward. Now, Isaiah is describing the spiritual condition of the Israelites, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there's no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. That's how he describes Israel. This is God telling him to use these words. In verse 9, the, the situation is so dire. In verse 9, the Bible says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been as Gomorrah. In other words, there was a small group that did not fit the description in verse 4, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. There was a small group who lived differently. They were faithful to God, and so and they preserved by the power of God and their cooperation, of course. And so the Bible says, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Let's continue the chapter to understand where the remnant or how the remnant fits. Verse 15, when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doing from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, verses 15, 16. And verse 17, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Do what is right. Clearly then, the remnant in verse 9 refers to that small group that was doing what is right in the sight of God as outlined in his holy word. And so the remnant from the Adventist perspective, which is a biblical one, the remnant refers to that small group left that is still faithful to thus set the Lord. And with respect to these last days, we're talking about the three angels messages and all that that expression encompasses the remnant, that small group, still clinging to the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. And so Revelation 12, 17 tells us, and the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now in verse chapter 13 of Revelation, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. The dragon now seems to be looking for the two uh, agents which he will use the sea beasts of Revelation 13, 1 through 10, and the two horned beasts, Revelation 13, 11 through 18. The dragon and those two will combine to try to overthrow the remnant, not the entire bolt of cloth, just the remnant, because it is the remnant, as in the case of the days of Isaiah. Isaiah 1, 9, there were a few who were not described as sinful nation, laden with iniquity, seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, the small remnant holding on to God's messages as entrusted to them are what we understand as the remnant today. Now that question had several parts. What's the second part of it? Okay, so the second part was, is it mm -hmm. only Seventh-day Adventists, which I think you covered. Okay, let, but let me, let me deal with that directly. The remnant is described in Revelation 12, Revelation 14, Revelation 12, 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we have those two defining characteristics. We add to that Revelation 14, verse 12, because this is also an end time, because the, 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 the just right after that is the coming of Christ in Revelation 14. So we're dealing with the end time people. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And so we have the commandments of God, the testimony of Jesus, the faith of Jesus. These are the distinguishing marks of the remnant 
people of God. And remember, they are a small group from a larger whole. Now, are they only Seventh-day Adventists? I cannot come boldly and say they are only Seventh-day Adventists. I will say the remnant are described as those who keep the commandments of God, have the testimony of Jesus Christ, and the faith of Jesus Christ. Those are the ones that are counted as the remnant. But I must add, according to John 10, verse 16, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. They are in Babylon. That is the, that's the target group for the loud cry of Revelation 18, 1 through 5. Come out of her, my people. God has people in Babylon. Now, they're not keeping the commandments. They're disobedient ignorantly. So they need to be informed that they may now practice remnant behavior. And so in a certain sense, they are those who are God wants to bring into the remnant. There are some preachers who say the remnant refers to the visible and the invisible. But I pick no large quarrel with them. What I'm saying is the remnant is described as those who keep the commandments of God, have the testimony of Jesus and the faith of Jesus. We cannot say that those in Babylon are doing that, even though God sees in the heart of those persons is a desire for truth. So they are called out that they may come and be a part of the remnant. And so the remnant are those described in Revelation 12, 17, 14, 12. But God has others who have a heart for the teachings of the remnant. And he will call them and they will come because my sheep know my voice. Amen. Amen. See, amen. the world is divided into obedient, disobedient, ultimately. Those who obey and those who don't. Now, so it's not divided between Adventists and non-Adventists. It's divided between those who obey and those who don't. There's some who obey actively. There's some who have a heart to obey. They just don't have the knowledge, and they need to be given that knowledge through the loud cry. Beautiful, which will be beautiful. energized by the latter rain, by the way. Mm. But Amen. those who make that loud cry will be those who are using the former rain. With those using the early rain, using the former rain, will be the ones who will receive the latter rain to give that loud cry. It has to be loud because the noise of false error in Babylon is so loud that the loud cry has to out loud the noisiness of Babylon. And so it's a loud cry that people can hear. For instance, if you look down to history, all the reformers, virtually all, identify the papacy as the little horn, the man of sin, the sea beast. All of them virtually, yet it does not seem to sink in. So we need a loud, loud to crash through the high decibels of error that are causing people to go off in all kinds of directions. It has to be loud, and those with the heart for the remnant will come. Amen, amen. And, you know, Elder Skeet, I believe that's mm. a perfect segue into our next question.